Good evening. Good evening. When you pop in, tell me if you can hear me. Tell me if you can hear my voice. Excellent, hello, hello. How's everybody doing this evening? I'm excited to talk tonight about one of my favorite topics, medicinal mushrooms. Love, love, love what they have done for us in our life. So I'm really excited to share. Oh, great, thank you, Danielle, I appreciate that. And hello, hello, messiest mom, hugs over masks. Welcome everybody. Happy to see some faces in here already. I've got these huge books on mushrooms, so I just got them all piled up uh, with all the pages marked so I can share exciting information with you. Hello, Rocky Mountain Stoner Chef. I got my King Palm all rolled up, and of course, I've got my fabulous little um, cannabis ashtray. I even cleaned it out so you could see the pretty design on the bottom of it. You know, those roaches, they pile up. They really pile up. Kathleen is here, hello. Now I've also got my tea ready. Did you bring some tea with you this evening? Tonight I am drinking uh, a tea called Adapting Gems and it is full of adaptogenic herbs. And one of the herbs in here is reishi mushrooms. So of course I had to have that one this evening. Uh, adaptogenic herbs super super cool they are herbs that um, help you deal with stress they help you um, cope with stress more readily and so I have been drinking adapting gems every single day lately because well there's a lot of stress in the world right now especially when you're homeschooling all these children Ooh, violator cushion Bengal spice that sounds delicious hello who's at my door oh it's you okay You were tall enough to come in. Oh. So I got my king palm. Hopefully you've got a nice fat doobie as well so you can spend a few minutes with me this evening. And hopefully you have brought a cup of tea as well. Somehow that always makes it easier to sit and relax. Oh, I have to show you all. My daughter went and got her um, lashing license on the weekend and she did my eyelashes last night and I'm just so pleased with them. I think they're so pretty. All day long my kids were like, mom, you're so pretty today. <laughs> Hello everybody, thank you for joining. So I feel extra pretty tonight for my little video. Are you getting crazy snow there too? We are, uh, we got snow all day again today. Not as bad as the weekend, but um, it's piling up out there. Everybody, where you are, how's your weather? We have definitely got winter arriving here. It may get warm and melt a bit again, but like we've got a nice layer of snow. There was, I think 20 inches fell on the weekend. I saw a Facebook friend posting all weekend long, measuring how much uh, snow had fallen on their table. So that's always entertaining to keep track of until I was gonna come and sweep all that snow off her table. But we're just getting to the time of year where we have to prepare for winter and uh, tea weather is right. I was telling you all last week about my friend's uh, Mother's Mary and how they were doing a winter preparedness um, class and I thought that was a really great idea. We all can, um, we should all be trying to keep our health up at all times but it seems with winter and the cold we feel like we're more um, susceptible to flus and colds and whatever else is going around at the time. So it's a really great time to start building up your immunity. Um, I was really privileged to take part in an herb conference this weekend, the Canadian Herb Conference. And one of the panels in the conference was specific to COVID. And there was also a um, seminar that was called Herbs for Epidemics. And the man who ran that seminar um, has been studying herbology of all kinds for over 40 years and he actually has a lot of friends in China who are herbalists and have been treating people with COVID so he was giving this really cool um, insider's look at some of the case studies that are coming out of China and the herbs they were using to treat people and just um, things to look for like the state of the tongue or 
that sort of thing. So it's, um, I felt really, really privileged to be a part of that uh, conference this weekend. And of course, mushrooms were a big part of the conference. There was a separate panel that was specific to mushrooms and there were a couple of different seminars that were specific to mushrooms. So there's just more and more evidence that we should be including them in our uh, regular nutrition, in our daily diets, and there's all kinds of ways that we can do that. So I gathered a few of the things that we use here at our house, and I'll show them to you this evening. But I also dug out a bunch of books that I'm gonna share with you that are great resources if you're interested in learning more about medicinal mushrooms and what they can do for you. So how many of you are currently taking any sort of um, mushroom as a supplement. Maybe you're doing like a lion's mane tea or maybe you're taking chaga, anything like that at all. Is, are any of you doing something like that currently? It seems like it's really popular these days. I, every time I open my Facebook or my Instagram, there seems to be an ad for some sort of medicinal mushroom. So uh, I'm not the only one who's excited about this stuff, that's for sure. Here in our house, we're currently taking um, a five mushroom tincture, and this is available uh, through a website called Harmonic Arts, and we also carry it at bloomandharvest.ca. And it is um, a blend of the probably five most popular mushrooms at the moment. In there is, um, yeah, yay. In there, we've got reishi, we've got cordyceps, we've got lion mane, turkey tail, and the last one, I can never remember all five. I always have to look at some point, chaga. So, <laughs> chaga, cordyceps, lion's mane, reishi, and turkey tail. And that blend of five mushrooms seems to be just really, really popular right now. All five of those mushrooms have really, really um, amazing benefits for people. And so, oh, I got a little, got a little bit of mushroom tincture on my hand there. Don't want to waste it. Now, um, in Eastern herbalism, mushrooms have always been popular. They've always known how important and beneficial they are in the East. So we're lucky to just finally be kind of coming into it here. Um, but there's a man named Paul Stamets, and he lives, I believe, up in Oregon, and he also owns some property. No, no psychoactive in any of these mushrooms that I'm talking about right now. These are all um, more nutritional mushrooms. And Paul Stamets has been doing research on mushrooms for years and years and years. And if you go on YouTube, there's a really great uh, interview with Joe Rogan. And the mushrooms they talk about in that um, interview go back and forth between nutritional mushrooms and psychoactive mushrooms. So you gotta kinda listen carefully. But there's a lot of really great information in there from that Paul Stamets. And it just kinda helps show you how much of an expert this fella is. Um, and how long he has been studying mushrooms. He has a lot to share. So the first book that I have here is called Mycelium Running. Now, um, mushrooms are fungi and they grow from a fruiting, they are actually the fruit of the mycelium. So like what you don't see, the part of mushrooms you don't see is the mycelium. It's like the part that maybe is inside the log or um, is under the ground. You don't see any of that. So Mycelium Running is um, Paul Stamets' book, the size of it. It is an absolutely huge text, just full of all kinds of information. This one is 341 pages, and its tagline is how mushrooms can help save the world. And I know that Paul has a lot of proof on how that is true because he has been working for a long time um, trying to do like remediation in the world. Say there was like a, a big oil spill. They call in someone like Paul Stamets and he uses fungi to clean up the site. And they are learning that fungi has this ability to clean up toxins and pollutions like nothing they've ever seen before. So that in itself, the fact that mushrooms can go in 
and heal and fix and repair in our physical world is a pretty good indication that they can go into our bodies and heal and fix and repair. So that is just one great book that you can find from Paul Stamets. I'm gonna try and smoke this a little more so I don't have to light it so often. I get so excited and so passionate I can't even help myself. So all these king palm clouds. I've got another book from Paul Stamets. All my mushroom books are from Paul Stamets. I really, I've got other authors in my, um, this is a king palm. It is a palm leaf. Great, and it's just stuffed with cannabis inside. This one is a uh, three and a half gram. It's the big guy. I knew I was gonna be here for a while, so I decided to go for the big one. The next book that I've got is called Growing Gourmet and Medicinal Mushrooms. And you can see the size of this sucker. I was really um, interested in the idea of growing mushrooms when I first started learning about them. And what I did learn very quickly is that mushrooms are a little bit tricky to grow. <laughs> yeah, you know it, Kathleen. Paul Stamets is awesome. He's like the encyclopedia of mushrooms. Um, I found mushrooms quite challenging to grow. I tried several different kinds, psilocybin, uh, oysters, several different types of oysters, shiitake, um, turkey tail, and they all started out well, but I, it, it, your humidity and temperature is so very important with mushrooms. And so I'll definitely try again, but uh, sometimes I just get discouraged and have a little temper tantrums. I have to take a break for a while and regenerate some excitement. Um, I've got a third book here, and again, it is from Paul Stamets. And this one is called Fantastic Fungi. And what's really great about this one is that this has actually been made into a movie. And you might be able to find it on Prime now. Um, we got it just at the website, I think it was fantasticfungi.tv or something like that. And um, it was amazing. And it's a very like general movie. They do touch on psilocybin a little bit, but we watched it with the children and they were fascinated. They loved it. The um, it, It's a very captivating show. It's very entertaining. The children love it. They ask every so often to watch it again. So that's what tells me that it really, really was a good show because, you know, kids, they may sit through something once, but for them to ask to see it again, um, it really lets me know that they, they understood just how powerful uh, fungi can be. So After this, if you find that you would like to go and learn more about mushrooms, Paul Stamets is a great starting point. And that movie, Fantastic Fungi, is amazing. So of course I had to buy the book to go with it because it was just so wonderful. Now, what I have in this one book here, in my silly I'm running, um, are some charts and what they do is they kind of outline just a, a fast and dirty so to speak what it is is an overview so down the side here I've got the different types of mushrooms and along the top here we have their therapeutic effects so I just want to share with you my top five those mushrooms that I've been raving about. I'm gonna share the therapeutic effects of those five with you so you can hear just what exactly these mushrooms actually have to offer you because I can rave and tell you they're wonderful, but it's good to know some actual details, right? So cordyceps, and that is cordyceps sinensis. So you, you there's gonna be all kinds of Latin names for different um, everything on earth, if we're being honest. So we are looking for cordyceps sinensis. It has antibacterial, 
effects, antioxidant, anti-tumor, antiviral, good for blood pressure, moderates blood sugar, good for cardiovascular, reduces cholesterol, enhances immunity, tonic for the kidneys, tonic for the liver, good for the lungs and respiratory, it's a nerve tonic, it's a sexual potentiator, and it's a stress reducer. So across the board, there was only two um, effects that cordyceps was lacking. It's not anti-candida, nor is it anti-inflammatory. So across the board, just cordyceps alone, if we were to add that to our diet, we are getting all those effects across the board. Pretty powerful. Was there any of those things that I stated that you were like, nah, I don't need that? No, we can all use those, right? Next, we have reishi. Now, all those things I just said to you, the only one it isn't is sexual potentiator. So it was everything across the board except for that one. So I don't want to yell them all at you one more time, but look at it. It has every one of those benefits, and that is called Ganoderma lucidum. So when you're looking for these ingredients, if you start um, shopping around and looking for the, the five mushroom tincture or blend or whatever it is, you wanna definitely check out those um, Latin names too and make sure you're getting the right thing. Next up, we've got lion's mane. And it's a few less, but still pretty good. We've got antibacterial, anti-candida, anti-inflammatory, anti-tumor. And lastly, lungs and respiratory, no, sorry, nerve tonic. So it's very good for the brain and anything nerve related. Kathleen, this chart is in mycelium running. This chart with all the mushroom information. And this book is loaded, loaded. I've got so many uh, pages marked in this book. Anything from Paul Stamets, it's worth it. So that was Lion's Mane. Below that, I've got Chaga. And it, again, is loaded. I'm going to run my finger across. Where yeah, Chaga? Across the board, right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the beneficial effects in Chaga. If you want to hear me read them, I'm happy to read them. I don't want to bore you with saying the same things over and over again. The last one that I'm looking for is Turkey Tail. And if you look for Paul Stamets and mention Turkey Tail on YouTube, you'll find a really great video where he talks about treating his mother with Turkey Tail as she went through breast cancer. And I highly recommend watching that video as well. Um, it's very protective while you're going through cancer treatment. The oils used in the tincture. So the tinctures would be, um, the one that we take is a, an alcohol-based tincture and it's dual extracted. So they, they do the extraction and then they boil it down. So like you're getting very little uh, alcohol effect. What are you asking, Park Nut? Are you asking about candida? Last one was turkey tail. Um, so other things I've read about turkey tail is that it's very specific to hormonal cancers. So of the breast, um, testicle, um, hormonal, any reproductive part in there, it, it's going to be very protective if you get cancer of those body parts. So turkey tail, antibacterial, antioxidant, anti-tumor, antiviral, immune enhancer, kidney and liver tonic. So those five mushrooms, as far as their beneficial um, attributes, pretty good, pretty good. The next chart I have is mushrooms with activity against specific cancers. So let's look up our top five again. Cordyceps, effective, in, uh, uh, helpful in leukemia, lung lymphoma and so what i'm what i'm perceiving that to mean is that if you use these while going through treatment for those cancers they're going to be extra protective for you um 
something that I heard in the herb conference this weekend is that when people were using mushrooms as they went through treatment, their survival after treatment was often double what those who weren't using mushrooms were. They followed a, a group of people who used reishi through colorectal cancer and they, um, the non-mushroom group lived an expected lifespan of approximately five years, I believe it was, but the group that used mushrooms lived almost 10 years after treatment. So that is impressive, right? And what can it hurt? What can it hurt to add a few drops of mushroom tincture to, to your tea each morning or, or, or to drink it in a tea itself? You know, there's, there's lots of different ways we can consume them. So then we move on to reishi here, and I've got protective properties in leukemia, liver, lung, prostate, and sarcoma. Next is lion's mane. That's protective in gastric and liver cancers. Um, that one is chaga. That one is cervical. That's the only one listed for that. And turkey tail down here, breast, cervical, gastric, leukemia, liver, lung, and prostate. So I just love looking at these charts because they just give me so much hope um, for what mushrooms can potentially do for the human body. As soon as I watched that, sem that uh, talk on YouTube where Paul Stamets spoke about his mother and giving her turkey tail through her cancer treatment, I ordered my mama bottle and I have been, <laughs> I gave it to her right away. She's been through breast cancer treatment, but you know, what's it gonna hurt for her to start taking that at this point in time? Now, uh, Dong Kwai, I believe is Angelica and that is an herb. That one. <clears throat> and that one is really, really, um, really a good herb too. For human sex health. For female sex health. Maddie must be reading up on that one. All right. I have one more chart in this book. And this chart is titled Mushrooms with Direct Antiviral Activity. Again, our top five are on this list. So um, across the top, we've got the viruses listed are hepatitis. We've got two types of herpes. We've got HIV, influenza, pox, I'm assuming chicken pox, uh, respiratory, Roux sarcoma, tobacco mosaic virus, varicella zoster, oh, I think that's chicken pox. And then another one, I've never heard of any of these. But anyways, we've got lots of antiviral activity in the mushrooms. And so cordyceps, antiviral for hepatitis, um, <laughs> Ganoderma lucidum, which is reishi, is powerful against both herpes, HIV, and influenza. <laughs> Enontus obliquus, I believe, is chaga, and that is influenza and pox. And then lastly, we've got our turkey tail, which is effective against HIV. That's exciting too. We use that for fertility. Oh, so Matt's right then. That is really exciting. And was that effective for you? I'm assuming you're talking about Dong Kwai. Dong Kwai. Oh yeah, you got it going. So that book has loads and loads and loads of information on mushrooms. And in the back, it actually has a chart on the beta glucans that are present in the various mushrooms. And it even goes into like the tri terpenoids that are present in the mushrooms. And that's what their real um, active medicinal ingredients are. And anybody who is familiar with cannabis knows that cannabis is full of terpenes. And so we've got a lot of uh, you know, some maybe overlapping or familiar ingredients from one to the other. I didn't actually show you my beautiful, fantastic 
12 years, only two kids. Well, oh, there's Paul Stamets and his mom, look. I opened up the Fantastic Fun Guy book and look, I go right to Paul Stamets and his mom. So definitely check out that video uh, on YouTube where he talks about how he helped his mom and, and she's lived a long time after treatment too. So that is super, super inspiring in my opinion. Um, I started a Tea of the Month club on the website at bloomandharvest.ca because uh, I think that having good practices as we move into the winter time is gonna be really helpful uh, for all of us. And that's why even having just a Tuesday live video where we can all get together and chat and visit and just make time for quiet learning and sharing, um, I think that it's really good. And in these times, I just wanna share with you some of the practices that I'm in incorporating into our lives and tea is definitely one of them. So tobacco mosaic affects cannabis too. Hmm. Um, you should Kathleen. So I've launched this tea club and you know, you're not obligated to watch my videos and drink my tea. You can drink whatever tea you like while you watch my videos, but it's just a nice way to get tea to your house. And I'm going to do a different assortment each month. Uh, this month I've got two teas from Harmonic Arts and tonight I'm drinking the Adapting Gem. So I was telling you earlier about adaptogenic herbs and how powerful they are for helping us react to stress and um, just... <coughs> They're just really good. Like I'm feeling really good the past week. I've been drinking about two weeks, but um, even the kids are like, mom, you're so happy. <laughs> and there's lots of other reasons for that too, but this is probably the newest thing that I've been incorporating is the Adapting Gems. Um, but check out that uh, Tea of the Month Club. I would love it if you would have a peek. We also have the Mushroom Tinksters and I'm gonna show you some of the mushroom beverages that I also have from Harmonic Arts. Now. There are a lot of different um, natural products available uh, at all different kinds of websites. And it was, I was really getting overwhelmed looking at all of them, trying to decide what I wanted to carry as I start um, just gathering products that I love and want to start using. No, I've not done that, Kathleen. Um, so I started just gathering everything and putting it on uh, bloomandharvest.ca. Uh, and what I had signed up for this herbalist course and the, the course is through Wild Rose College and the man who founded that college is Terry Willard. He started it in 1975 and he has a son named Yarrow and Yarrow branched off and began Harmonic Arts. And now they all live together out on the island on the West Coast and they run the school and the company and listening to the herb conference over the weekend just reinforced my... Um, choice in them to supply these types of products like they have they've been overseas to china they they walk through the forest and and wild craft as much of the herbs as they can they're they're growing as much as they can right on their own land and i just really appreciate the care and concern they've gone to in selecting their products so um i really truly believe that when you get these teas and products from harmonic arts you're getting a really good quality thing and that's pretty important to me. <laughs> Thank you. That's a nice thing to say. I also have these lovely lashes that my daughter installed for me last night. That's making me feel extra pretty. <laughs> so <laughs> Thank you for that. So um, tonight, the Adapting Gems, I chose that one because I'm excited about adaptogenic herbs and because it has the reishi mushroom in it and I'm raving about mushrooms tonight. So that's my choice for the evening. But Harmonic Arts does a variety, there's so many different things. And tonight, what I brought are just all the mushroom beverages. So the first one I'm gonna show you is so yummy. If you love hot chocolate, if you are reluctant about mushrooms, maybe you don't love them, the, like the texture. And I get that totally, like I just, I tried really hard to eat mushrooms in our in our meals and stuff, but it's just not it's not something we enjoy. <laughs> so we need to get them in other ways. There's just something about that texture. <laughs> it's just not pleasant. I don't know what it is. But anyways, 
We've tried this five mushroom hot chocolate and it is um, rich heirloom cacao, five nourishing mushrooms and deeply restorative. And it is, it is really, really good. Um, you just have to like stir it into some water. I like to like steam milk or foam milk in the foamer and add this into that and it is so decadent. If you're vegan, then of course just, you know, do it in what, like a coconut milk or something like that. It is so yummy. The kids love it. Do you want this again? So it's an easy thing to start including in your routine. I think Kern even put it over his cereal one day. Yes, thank you for saying that, Kathleen. I also do that. We have another product. Um, it's by uh, Dragonfly Earth Medicine. And it's on the website too. It's called Essential Cocoa. And it is, um, I love harmonic arts, but oh, Dragonfly Earth Medicine just has a really wonderful cause. They're all about like biodynamics and regenerative farming and everything is done with intention and purpose. And so they also have a cocoa that features the mushrooms. And then they've got some that have medicinal herbs in there as well. One has nettles and um, alfalfa. And we like to put that in our coffee. Oh, I'll bring this story around at some point in time. And it's just so, it's just a great way to get a bit of nutrition into your regular beverages. That's what I really, really like it. So whatever your regular milk is, um, Rocky Mountain, if you like regular milk, use that. If you are a fan of coconut milk, you can use that too. I've got the little uh, milk foamer that came with my... Um, coffee machine. What's that stupid coffee machine called? It's just a little Nestle milk foamer and you just pour about this much milk in there and you press a little button and it foams it. It heats the milk and it puts this nice foamy layer on top and then you pour that into your coffee and it's kind of like a latte. So it'll work on any kind of milk. It, it works on the coconut or the oat or almond, any of the milks. It'll fold them up and you could just make yourself a really, really nice hot chocolate. It is, isn't it, Kathleen, the oat milk? And it's got a nice flavor too. I was really surprised when I tried oat milk. Now, another herb that I am currently totally in love with is turmeric. And um, maybe you've already heard of golden milk, uh, but this one is a powder and you can add this to water or again, whatever your choice of milk is. And this one has turkey tail in it. So this is turmeric spice, uh, ashwagandha and turkey tail. Let's see if it's got anything else in it. Coconut cream, ginger too and white pepper. So you got to read the ingredients, okay? If you've got any sort of um, allergies, super important to know your allergies because sometimes people are like, oh, I'm allergic. And then, ah, okay, I'm making you your own cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, that Nespresso is really sweet. I love it. Uh, I wanted to buy a really expensive espresso maker and I'm glad I didn't. I just bought the virtual line. What is that thing called? It's the Nespresso one. All right, I've got one more Harmonic Arts beverage. This one's called Elevate, and it's a cardamom flavor with lion's mane, and it's also got lotus pollen in it. And it will be very yellow, yes very yellow. So this one with the lion's mane, lion's mane is really great for focus and attention and memory. And I actually gave this to my mother-in-law, uh, hoping that she'll take it. And she tells me she does, but I'm not sure. <laughs> you got to check in with her and see if the bottle's getting quite low. Um, but that's really, really good if you're looking, say, to improve those memory functions, that sort of thing. And I've got one last uh, mixed beverage. This one is called Activate and it's chocolate cinnamon spice. And if you've never had cinnamon in your hot chocolate before, you need to try that right now because it is so good. Uh, Energizing Shilajit 
reishi, and chaga. So between these different beverages, we've got a little bit of this mushroom, a little bit of that mushroom, and we're mixing it up a little bit. So if you're not wanting to try the full five, one of those beverages is a good, is a good way to do it as well. Mm. So those are just some of the really easy ways that you can start including mushrooms in your diet without having to actually like buy real mushrooms because this stuff stays good forever. You know, it's not gonna go bad in your fridge or it's not gonna get soft or yucky. You know, you can throw that tincture in your tea or just stir these beverages into your coffee or make them on your own, on their own. And they're just really yummy and really easy to start including in your diet, especially if you join me for Tuesday tea every week. You can be very purposeful and make that beverage for yourself. Makes it easy. I've been talking so much, my throat's getting dry. All right, so I'm gonna show you those books one more time, just in case you were late joining and you can see what these great resources are. So again, the author of all three was Paul Stamets. The first one I showed you with all the charts in it was Mycelium Running. Okay, if you're thinking you might like to grow mushrooms, then Growing Gourmet and Medicinal Mushrooms, also by Paul Stamets, definitely a good ad. If you're not as much into reading and you would like to maybe watch a movie, then check out Fantastic Fungi. You don't have to be sorry. It's all good. Fantastic Fungi. You, I believe this is on Prime now, but if you can't find it on Prime, then just Google Fantastic Fungi. And this book is like a coffee table book that showcases all the greatness that's in the movie. But if you're not a big reader, then that movie is an excellent place to uh, learn more about mushrooms. And don't forget to go to YouTube and search Paul Stamets Turkey Tail Mushroom. And I'm sure it'll bring up the big talk he does where he uh, shares about his mom and how he uh, gave her turkey tail mushroom as she went through breast cancer treatment in her 80s and she's now in her 90s and fully recovered and it just really helped her as a protectant as she went through her treatment so like at no time was he ever like no don't do chemotherapy or any of that sort of stuff you know he, he still encouraged her to follow the instructions but just gave her this additional nutritional step supplement in order to be protective to her body because we all know how damaging chemotherapy is to the human body uh, so this just helped protect her and she's still here and that is really really a great thing because that's not always the case but it's a really inspiring story all three of these books are really really wonderful resources if you're wanting to have um if you have a practice of some sort or if you're dealing with clients yes yeah libraries it's just really great to have the verbiage when you're speaking to people uh to help them learn about the things you're passionate about at least that's how i feel about it um like when my mom is asking me why should i take turkey tail tincture I'm already through breast cancer treatment. And my point is that it's non-toxic and it can't hurt. So why keep yourself vulnerable? Let's let's build your immunity and, and be preventative. So coming back earlier, I mentioned the herb conference that I was a part of this weekend. Um, one of the seminars was herbs for epidemics. And in that session, the man's name was Will Morris. He talks about the six stages of disease. And the first stage is prevention. Prevention. So there's really, really, really good reason to build your immunity and to find what is ailing you currently and start resolving those, those issues. 
why wait for them to accumulate or get worse or or say you get exposed to some sort of virus and and then you're more vulnerable as a result of that ailment that you've currently got so if we start incorporating little healthy things then we can build our own immunity so that we are stronger when we uh, encounter stresses or diseases but what do you guys think Has anybody got questions? I got a big pile of books. I can look up the answers. Or questions about any of the products that I showed you? Questions about the teas? I've got a bunch of little hoodlums outside wanting to read a Narnia book. And I've nearly destroyed my palm. Look how good I did. There's some clouds for all you all. Well, going to the doctor just isn't necessary. Like I, I guess I just don't agree with going and getting tested when you haven't got symptoms, that sort of thing. The mushroom for prostate cancer. Let's look that up. Mushrooms with activity against specific cancers. Prostate was reishi and turkey tail. Reishi and turkey tail, Kathleen. Tea that helps with memory. Any, lion's mane is gonna help with anything uh, neural. Nerves, brain. Lion's Mane. Thanks for coming tonight, Meats. Rocky Mountain is your real name, Ashley. You're welcome, Kathleen. I'm glad you were here. How are you finding the course, Kathleen? Do you enjoy it? Mushroom specific to women's hormonal health? I think that in itself is probably a whole talk. But under cervical, I've got chaga and turkey tail. Ovarian. Is a Phytocyb illudence. I don't know that one. That's ovarian. Not a lot. Also, cervical was agaricus brillicensis, but I don't know what that one is. And that clytocybe was a poisonous species, not edible. Yes, okay. I know there's so much in that herbal course. I'm really, really so glad I signed up for it. Even just owning the textbooks is so worth it. <laughs> I love books. <laughs> and they're massive books too, like really big, like 500 page books, just dense. It's so great. Well, my friends, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really, really love sharing um, information, especially when it comes to like mushrooms and stuff I'm passionate about. I hope you'll continue to join me on Tuesdays. Um, I think that it's going to be a lot of fun for us all to just stay in touch with each other. So thanks again for that. I hope to see you again next week. If you've got questions, please feel free to send them to me. Uh, I, I, I would love to do a video to address that question if it's a nice big topic, uh, that sort of thing. So always feel free to send me your messages and questions. I'm happy to uh, answer them. All right. 
Have a wonderful evening to all of you. Uh, thanks for joining me, Dope Darlings. Check out the teas and the tinctures and all the good stuff I showed you tonight on bloomandharvest.ca. Nice to see you, Chrissy. Thank you. All right. Bye for now.